In this video, we'll take a look at another intermediate retopology tool called the Strokes tool. And I'm going to go ahead and hide this layer and use another. And this happens to be my favorite of all the tools because on one hand you can get explicit edge flow and at the same time it meets halfway between manual control and full automation in that it creates an entire mesh for you. So let me demonstrate that. What I want to do is make sure my lines are, are nice and clean. I'm going to go to an orthographic view uh, to eliminate any perspective angle distortion. I'm going to side view and I'll zoom in. Oops. And with the strokes tool active, I'm going to simply create some loops here. So I start from outside the object to the outside on the other side and what this will do is it will create an entire loop all the way around and this works even if you're working on a, a square or rectangular model anything with uh, hard edges if you get it lined up right it will make a nice loop even on the edges of your rectangle okay so put one here you can put one at the very tip as well in flat areas, you don't need as many loops, but wherever you have curvature or maybe hard edges, you probably want to apply a few more. I might put one more right there. I'll do that. Okay. You don't have to put quite as many, but this is fine. Okay. So now the next step is to make a cross section, just a single cross section. And 3D Coat will basically replicate that cross section all the way across the model in creating segments. And so you can designate how many segments. Here, I'll reduce it down to 16. And I'll click my little cube icon to go back into perspective view. And so I'll start here. I can freeform it. Now the spline points density is typically at 100% by default. And depending on the size of the model, that may be fine. But you want to be careful. Okay, that looks like it's fairly close, but let me just demonstrate by going all the way down to the lowest amount. And if you try to create a spline with the value way too low, then you can see you don't have enough control points really to help uh, keep that spline conform to the object. So let's try maybe 60 or so and it's okay but sometimes portions of this may dip beneath the voxel object so we probably want to go a little bit on the high side if you go too high though you have another issue if you want to go in and manipulate the shape then you've created too many points uh, so you're just giving yourself more work to do Okay, so you want a happy medium here. And I also want to point out that whenever you have your spline highlighted like this, you can go ahead and delete it if you want. Uh, same thing with any of these loops here. Just click on it. Once it's highlighted, you can delete it. Okay. So you don't have to worry about being too um, steady with your stroke. Because even if I'm a little bit off like this, it will still... Uh, smooth it out a bit. Let's bring our points density down to about 200. Okay, and that's fine. That's maybe a little bit on the high side, not too much though. Maybe 150. Okay, so 
again you can see it creates a nice soft curve uh, if you have soft splines selected you can uncheck that and these will be sharp it'll be uh, straight in between the points as you can see here okay so check that and the best way to be precise and this is my own uh, favorite way of working is you can hold the control key then click and you can set your own points along the way right, and I can continue a loop here typically what I'll do is I'll start on the far side I'm hold down the control key and I'll work my way back to the other part of the segment I want to connect it to and that way I can close the loop or close that uh, that line so I'll do a few times but if you started here and you worked your way down and want to come back and connect this you could do it that way too you could simply click on the endpoint bring it over the other and you can see how it highlights that other point and that tells you that it's going to snap it or join them together okay so that looks about like what I want and all I have to do is hit the enter key and you can see it just took those guides that I gave it and it created an entire mesh so in some sense this is basically an auto retopology tool okay all I had to do is just give it a few hints or a few guides and it created the entire mesh for me so that's really really handy all right So let's try the teeth now. Let's unhide the teeth and hide the tongue. And I could do the same thing, but even with uh, the strokes tool, and that could take a little while to do. So on objects like this, you might try auto retopology. It's very good for secondary objects. In in some cases, it's good for maybe a character, or it's good to work on maybe armor of a character, or non-deforming objects in an animation. Uh, it's great for that because in those cases, you don't really have to have perfect topology. Um, yeah, auto root topology makes sense in a lot of cases, but not in every case. So I'll try to show that in greater detail on the body itself here in just a moment but this is a very good instance where you probably would want to use it so uh, yeah and this teeth parent layer selected I'm going to do right click and choose autopo or auto read topology and I have this dialog that comes up and I can choose whether to apply symmetry in this case I don't need apply symmetry um, not necessarily um, because it will apply it to all these objects that are on the layer so I'll just leave that off for the time being the required poly count for all of these um, let's try um, 2500 I think the default is about 3000 in your auto density influence multiplier sometimes uh, this is very important the default amount is at one you could bring it up to 1.2 or 1.4 and get a fairly good result so I'll try that 1.2 and these other options are by default it's basically going to decimate a version of this model and use that for the algorithm it makes it a little bit uh, less time consuming if the model is decimated first okay so I think we're ready just hit OK it's now going to allow me to paint select 
areas where it needs to be a little bit more dense. So in this case, I think I'm going to leave it alone. I could apply stroke guides for it to follow, but oftentimes 3D Coat detects curvature and uh, edges well enough that it doesn't really need guides. On simple objects like this, it doesn't need it. So I hit next. Okay, it came out fairly good with 2500 polygons, but I noticed on some of the smaller teeth at the very bottom, there just weren't enough polygons for it to maintain the shape of the voxels uh, beneath. So I tried it again, and so what I did is I deleted the layer, just clicked on the little trash can, and to try again, I just select the teeth layer, right click, and chose Auto Retopo. And in this case, I changed it from 2500 to 3500. And uh, I did not have hard surface checked. And I did not have uh, symmetry enabled. So I didn't change anything but the amount of the polygons. So I'll click Cancel. And it came out fairly good. I just needed to increase the polygon count, and that was it. So. Let's now try that on the eyes. I'm going to go ahead and hide the teeth. And I'll hit the S key and enable symmetry. I'm going to go into orthographic view to remove any perspective distortion. And I'll just go ahead and go through the wizard here. Choose Autopo. I want symmetry on this one. And in this case, I'll choose hard surface retopology because it's usually pretty good whenever you have a nice hard crease like that. So uh, polygon count 1000 uh, for the eyes is about as much as I want. And everything else stays the same. So hit OK. And what I did is I created a, a stroke guide here. I'm going to go ahead and clear those and redo it. I'll start from one end to the other, just like that. You can see it creates an inner guide or inner stroke for me as well. And so this works really well if you're working on Let's say something like a gun barrel or an object that's hollow. It will also select not just the outer uh, mesh or the outer portion of your voxel object, but the inner portion as well, as you can see there. Okay, so I'll undo that. And also, if you'll notice, I created that stroke on the negative side of the x-axis. So, by default, 3D Coat looks to mirror from uh, the positive side of the axis. So, let's say you started creating some geometry on the negative side, and you don't have Invert Mirror selected. Uh, you, you might get some strange behavior, uh, if, especially if you're using strokes or something like that, and hit Enter, and you don't see anything. Uh, it's probably because of this very thing I'm talking about. 3D Coat is looking to mirror from the positive side to the negative side. But that's no problem. If you have already started on the negative side of the axis, just go ahead and check Invert Mirror. Okay, and go ahead and click Next. Okay, came out fairly decent. Um, I'm going to delete that and try it again. And this time, 
what I'm going to do is, since this is a voxel object, I oftentimes would like to do a little house cleaning and I can right click on the layer and choose fill voids. So if by chance there's a little pocket or a little uh, bubble uh, inside that I can't see from the outside, and sometimes that will happen. Um, so I got that squared away. I'm also going to right click and choose to global space. And hit the S key, just choose reset symmetry plane. Okay, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, on topo one more time. Hit OK. Next. I may just leave that be. Okay, we still did the same thing, so I'm going to delete that one more time, give it another try. Right click uh, on top of But this time, I'm going to turn hard surface off. When it goes through the wizard and gets to the stroke portion, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this point and delete it. I'm going to crank up the spline points density. That might have some effect. As a matter of fact, I'll just delete that one as well. Okay. And in this case, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to hit the control key and just, oops, control key. Just create about 10 points here. Okay, let me create one more on the back side here. Next. Okay. Came out fairly decent. So, and it will always highlight the polygons. And so we can just click clear selection or we could hit the control D keyboard combination. And I might try slide edges, choose edge loops, and move those up a bit. Oops. Can it relax? Okay, we have completed all of our meshes on our secondary objects, so we're going to move on in the next video by working on UVs. So stay tuned, and thank you for watching.